Hello everybody and welcome to Bitshala Bitcoin Talk. Today we have Aditya Sharma with us, uh, who is a young Indian Bitcoin developer who got into an internship in Blockstream. He's from ITPHU fourth year and interestingly, he's not from computer science background. So we are going to have a lot of fun talking with Aditya today. Uh, welcome Aditya. Hi Raj, uh, pleasure to be here. Thank you for inviting me. Hey, nice. Uh, so, um, Aditya has been working with Summer of Bitcoin. He joined the Summer of Bitcoin program and then he got into an internship with Blockstream where he has been working into cold lightning peer backup storage system, some exotic lightning stuff. So, Aditya, like the first question I have for you is like, how does somebody from metallurgy ends up in lightning network? Uh, maybe... In a word and word, if I could describe it, just curiosity. So initially I was looking for, like I was an open source developer and I used to do data structures and algorithms to prepare for fiat jobs. Uh, but then I came across summer of Bitcoin. One night I got a mail from my institute uh, describing the program and all of those things. And uh, I, it got, uh, I got really curious that what it is and I, researched i went to the website directly i saw the people i saw people from chain code labs so i immediately applied and uh, i was one of the first applicants actually i was in the first cohort mm -hmm. so yeah and that's how i got into summer of bitcoin i had no idea regarding what bitcoin is or, or what it stands for what are its mm -hmm. philosophies i right. just got in uh, yeah and i so learned uh, during my program and then in the process it, it did it kind of felt like this is more than what you might have signed up for along yeah initial, initially i was just looking for like a good stipend and two months of learning but once i got in i had the lectures i had uh, frequent chats with adi jonas i got to learn what it stands for i got down the rabbit hole during that time only uh, right and yeah that's how i got i knew what bitcoin is and what it is right for. and when you were going through this journey were you alone from your campus or your neighborhood in the hostel so there were like other people also interested or group of friends who might be talking about it i was actually in a room for a year and a half because it was locked down so i was at my home uh -huh. uh, i was the only guy from my institute uh, in that cohort so okay. yeah i i had nobody my parents knew nothing about bitcoin my like they have some idea now of what it is. I have, I have orange filled them as well. Uh, nice. But, but yeah, no one around me knew what Bitcoin was. Nice, makes it's, sense. Yeah. And uh, and like uh, throughout the journey, like as you have gone through the basics and then got started uh, into working with Blockstream, which is one of the well-known Bitcoin research and development companies, and they are doing some amazing works over there. So but what are the parts of Bitcoin, the philosophy, the techno technology, and in general, the culture that interest you the most, like interest you the most? So, okay, uh, from a technological standpoint, uh, standpoint, I think it's an engineering marvel. If you read the white paper, how it describes the double spending problem, the Byzantine general problem. So from a technological standpoint i think uh, it's one of the most beautiful thing uh, beautiful software i have seen uh, from a philosophical thing i understood it quite later when i uh, read the book why bitcoin and uh, what are its economic implication how it sort of gives you an option to opt out of the system that you are shoved down your shoved down your throat by the state so yeah uh, this part of the uh, this part of the philosophy i discovered quite later but from a technological standpoint it's very good right and blockstream yeah rusty and uh, nifty christian decker these guys are really awesome they taught me a lot during the course of my internship uh, right. i was a newbie i didn't even knew git and github before summer of bitcoin mm -hmm. so all of my learning yeah. all of the things that i know is through Blockstream and through these. Yeah, things. and how was like working with Blockstream? How was the environment over there? How was the people? It's it's really great. These guys are like they they are legendary. They know all of this stuff, and they they are like very uh, 
they are very interested to teach you things whenever i send a dm i get a response from them within an hour and or a half they i get on a call with them to clear my doubts and right. yeah this is it's really great i shamelessly uh, uh, ask doubts to these guys to learn right more. right so now yeah. you are an official block stream shell will you say that <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah you're you're part of the lizard people anyway so <laughs> so moving ahead so uh, you have been like in your internship like you have also presented this idea in the indian technical conference and uh, you have been working on this uh, nice thing called the peer storage backup system in yeah. in in lightning so we will go into deep uh, details into what this is and how this works so for our regular uh user if you just have to give one brief one liner or like just a basic introduction of what peer storage backup system is and mm -hmm. um, uh with that we'll go ahead with the presentation after that all right so in a single line uh, i would say uh we are trying to backup a highly dynamic database which uh, which is used to store your money so yeah that's what we are doing we are actually distributing the backup of that database into the network and if mm -hmm. in case of severe data loss you can uh, just contact your peers grab that database and it's encrypted so your users can't steal your money so right. you'll get your uh, get your backup and you can recover your funds right so it's about that part of the problem in lightning where the lightning node has to manage a big chunk of huge states and these states gets are dynamic and they are evolving all the time and if something True. goes wrong with your database system or your hard drive or your server if you lose the state you cannot recover your funds right so yeah. this is a way to mitigate that problem so thanks yeah. for this nice introduction and with that uh, let's share your screen and uh, uh with and we'll move ahead with a detailed presentation of like what this is how this is work and we will also go through and demo. so the stage is your aditya cool thank you so uh, first i would like to explain uh, uh, for users that don't know what lightning network is uh, lightning network is a layer 2 protocol so it's a peer to peer protocol which is uh, based upon the base layer which is the blockchain it enables users to send transactions without mining them on the block so uh, if there are there are different nodes on the network uh, they have this thing called the payment channel and each payment channel has a funding transaction on the blockchain and that's it once you have the funding transaction mined uh, you can do any number of transactions within instantly within like uh, it depends on the speed of your internet so it's basically uh, one millisecond or so so you can do transactions on that network so imagine if i and raj have a payment channel on the ni lightning network so we would first mine a funding transaction on the blockchain and then through uh, pointing back towards that transaction i can make any number of uh, transactions to raj and these uh, these transactions are called payments which are contracts which can be uh, proven on the blockchain if you want to close the channel now this is one part of the lightning network uh, if i want to send a payment to some other guy uh, with, with with whom i don't have a channel i can route my payment through the network as well so imagine if there are three guys me raj and uh, adi uh, and i and raj have a channel raj and adi have a channel but i and adi don't have a channel and if i want to send my funds to adi uh, I can route my payment through Raj. So Raj can uh, get the payment fees and route my transaction to Adi instantly without mining it uh, on the block. So it basically scales the uh, Bitcoin blockchain. Yeah. Right. That, yeah. So this is what Lightning Network is. Now, uh, with this, uh, there's an issue in Lightning that each transaction is stored in your local database. So these are not uh, these the contracts that you send uh, are not on the blockchain. It's in your local database or your whatever you're using to store these contracts in. And it's highly dynamic. Like each transaction has to be stored. If you don't have that, uh, you can be penalized if you uh, if you broadcast a previous state. So 
this is a big issue in lightning so that's what we are trying to solve with static channel backups and peer storage backups uh just to uh, uh, like uh, mention a bit on that point of like the penalization is um in in lightning what you what we have is like the the balances between me and you say me and you have a channel the balances gets updated and it's between you and me so the global database does the blockchain database doesn't need to see that so what happens is like if we try to publish and previous state where i have more balance than you then you can punish me with publishing the new state and get all my funds so that's why i as an other counterparty will not want to publish my previous states where i might have more money yeah. right but the problem is these states has to be stored and these states has to be retained and that's what like peer back channel backup basically is trying to solve yeah to solve this issue uh, okay. we have this yeah to solve this issue we have this thing called static channel backups so the channel thing right the payment uh, channel thing that i have mentioned earlier uh, the states of it are dynamic but there is some static information in every channel which is the node id uh, the base points like each client of lightning derives the base point using some information uh, out of the uh out of the transaction so those things are static so what right. we are trying to do is uh with the initiation of each channel we are storing these in uh, this static information into a file uh, in encrypted fashion which are encrypted using your wallet seed uh, using the hkdf function so we are storing it uh, in case of c lightning it's called the emergency.recover file uh so yeah Uh, whenever you open a channel this file stores the static information in it and then if your database gets corrupted like uh, there is some severe data loss and you can't get it back you can what you can do is you just need this file which won't have your states or anything you just need this file you just need to run an rpc command uh, so your node will uh, contact your peers and tell them to close the channel and then you can prove on the blockchain because the base point information is still in the file so okay. you can grab your funds which are dropped on the blockchain by your peers makes sense so that's right. yeah it's uh, it's the last sort of resort for getting your funds back yeah mm-hmm. but but what about those part of the channel data where like um, the updated balance so the static part is like probably the channel capacity the node id the ip address of the yes the content of scp is like these are the parts of these are static but what happens of the payment flows like there has been like payments back and forth between um, me and you and those states has been like um, has it, it is not it, isn't those states are also stored in scp yeah so at this point it's not truly trustless this thing uh, is like this should only be used in case of uh, severe data loss and you don't know how to get the funds back so it will what it will do is lightning rfc has this message type which is error so what i can do i can uh, connect to my peer and tell them to force close the channel now now there are two things so it's basically game theory uh, the peer don't know that i have lost my database right so right. if he yeah uh, so if he takes the chance of publishing a previous state mm-hmm. and he might get punished yeah he might get punished so he would not do that we are trusting that and he uh, and that's how because the error that i sent has nowhere mentioned that i have lost my database or so so we are mm-hmm. sort of masquerading uh, right to for yeah to force close the channel and then right. when you just he... want a information that this was my peer this was the channel so i can craft the channel shutdown message and send it to this peer and yeah. assuming this peer just follows the standard protocol it will just try to like force close that much uh, that, that particular channel yeah True. but but there's the risk like if the peer try to sneak in and say like oh did you lost your data now i can be nasty and like uh, yeah. update previous states and then you can't basically do anything about it right true yep makes sense but there's no way for him to know that i have lost my data so the right. error message that we sent is we can't be together anymore so <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah so, right 
yeah. yeah so it doesn't mention that i have lost so it's basically a risk he's taking if he uh, sort of publishes mm-hmm. a previous state all right okay and yeah it's nowhere the first thing that you should be doing if you lose your database it's the last resort that you should be using uh, mm-hmm. in case you have lost your database and you want to grab your funds mm-hmm. right yeah now what uh, peer storage is so this was a static channel backups that i just mentioned now uh, it's in a file which is emergency.recover what peer storage backup does is it it encrypts the scb and uh, Uh, distributes it among your peers so each time i connect to one of my peers i send him a message i basically take a part of storage from him on rent uh, in further versions we are also uh, aiming to include some some amount of sets to get the uh, get the kbs for some sets right. yeah right yeah. makes sense sets per kb uh, that's yeah. like the storage cost that the peer will ask for yeah basically a marketplace for backups right so yeah peer storage backup distributes it to your peers and if you uh, if you lose all your data and you lose the static channel backup file as well so what you can do is you can just connect to the peer and he will send you the storage that you sent earlier and then you can decrypt it and you that could be used to recover your channel right and the peer that we are talking about here are our channel peers or like lightning gossip peers both both uh, no the channel peers and uh, even with a peer that you don't have a channel with not the gossip okay. this is not the part of gossip okay uh, only the peers that you have connected through your nodes okay doesn't doesn't necessarily mean that i have to have channel with them true yeah okay so for uh, for people who already know cold lightning so before funding a channel we we should be connected through uh, to him right so uh, as soon as i connect to a peer i send him a storage and he sends me his and these okay. are encrypted and stored but then those peers uh, have to like advertise like i can do this for you not all peers will be able to do this right now the cold lightning uh, every cold lightning node would support this thing but okay. uh, yeah in the coming version because it's uh, the scb is uh, it's very less in uh, memory like it's 10 kb 15 kb mm-hmm. so it doesn't harm if i keep uh, keep the memory but yeah we are planning to give option to the uh, node owners so that they can decide if they want to keep it or not makes sense yeah uh yeah this is a very important uh, warning the uh, both of these things are not the first thing that you should be doing if you lose your database uh, in case of severe data loss and you are not uh, uh, you are not uh, sort of uh, getting any of your data back and you want to get the funds you can use these to get the funds back from the blockchain yeah so demo time uh, i can uh, now i'll head over to the terminal uh, i'll show you how it's done uh, through cold lightning on the red test uh, yeah so let's head over to the terminal so yeah so till now what i have explained is the static channel backup so it's stored in a file right uh, what peer storage backup does is it takes scb one step further so what we are doing is we are distributing the static channel backup in an encrypted fashion to our peers uh, so basically uh, when i connect to a peer i can send them my uh, this message called uh, peer your peer storage and my peer storage so if i have stored something on my peers behalf i'll send that to him and if he has something on my behalf he'll send that to me so uh, in case of severe data loss and even if you have lost the emergency.recover file which has the scb uh you can just connect to any of your peers uh, necessarily you don't need to have a channel with them if you have connected with them before uh they have they should have your scb uh, if they have cold lightning so you will get the peer storage backup you can decrypt it locally and then you can send the uh, force close message to each of your channel partners so that you can grab the funds through the blockchain right makes sense yeah so this is what peer storage backup does uh, th- uh in this version uh, it only stores the scb and it's free uh in the coming version we would be creating a menu card for each node so 
uh, they can sort of advertise if they want to uh, give you some storage on their node for ex in exchange of some sats so it's really right. cool yeah what is happening right. in this so in in a, in a way like it's also allow node operators to or lightning node runners to earn sats not just by routing fees but also like extending their hard disk space to the network so people can use them to store their backup servers so ideally one peer will be having multiple backup stores with multiple peers true uh, yeah this would be the case but uh, as uh, right now static channel backups don't like occupy much space a single static channel backup would not go over like 10 kb or 12 kb so if you have uh, 100 peers and that is a rare case if you have 100 peers it would be like 1200 kb so it won't be right. that much still yeah. it scales pretty well like uh, yeah. 100 peer is already we are talking about somebody is a serious node runner and managing 100 channels and then mm. it's like 1.2 mbs of data yeah 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 and uh, so this is like another thing that it increases is the redundancy of the data now if like um, now now you also have to like store somehow like who are your peers to whom you have shared the data to yeah that you should be knowing your peers and their ip addresses uh, right yeah you should at least have that uh, necessarily you don't need all the addresses of the peers if you know some of them you can just connect and get the storage backup yes. and it would have all the remaining peers addresses right so, okay yeah sounds good sounds good so let's move ahead and uh, okay yeah so uh, this is an important thing this is not the first thing that you should be doing if you lose your data because uh, this is a uh, yeah this is a last resort thing if you have lost all your things and there is no way for you to recover the channel you can use static channel backups and peer storage backup to grab your funds on chain okay so yeah. what's the first thing they should do if some node runners like loses like node yeah. crashed and they lose the yeah. data ideally a serious node runner should have raid systems in place to back up his data like core lightning uh, core lightning gives this feature of updating your database at two places simultaneously you can give the link of some uh, hard disk or other things and emergency recover file should always be like uh, backed up every time you make a new channel mm -hmm. so yeah these are the right now these are the things that are suggested to back up I your do, so for a node runner should make sure like he has his data and the backups as redundant as possible so in case of a outrage or in case his hard disk gets corrupted he should be able to like make a full copy of the his database from other places that he maintains and in this is like the last resort scenario if all of those fails you should have some peers who will be storing your scb data and from there you can like you, you will you, you cannot like resume your lightning operation you kind of have to like force close all the channels because you have also lost the channel yeah. states and force yeah. close the channel get the on-chain funds and then recreate the channel again and start from there but it's at yeah. least better now you don't have your funds stuck in limbo and yeah. or lo not lost your bitcoin you can like get the bitcoins back yeah but there is a like i had a chat with rusty on this and uh, we we are brainstorming on how we could enable the user to resume the channels through these so, okay, yeah, okay. That's that pretty would be cool. Really cool. so that's an enhancement yeah. that is coming up yeah hopefully okay. yeah 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 let's yeah. see and uh, okay cool so yeah. we move ahead for the demo yeah uh, so yeah i'll take you to the terminal and show you how it's done in cold lightning totally all right so cold lightning has this shell script developed by uh, nifty from blockstream uh, which enables you to host any number of nodes on your local machine on the reg test so yeah it's in the contrib folder and it's called the startup reg test.sh so i have run, i have already run that shell script so now i would be hosting two nodes on the network uh, making a channel between them and i'll delete the database and then we'll recover it using uh, emergency recover let's go right. so yeah 
these are the two nodes one is l1 cli and the other is l2 cli these are the log files of these uh, nodes so this is l1 cli this is uh, this is the information of this node this is the node id this is the number of peers pending channel uh, addresses and all of those things so uh, first i'll uh, i'll recharge my uh, lightning wallet uh, with some sats we are getting a new address now we are yeah. using bitcoin cli to send fund to that address yeah Uh, it must already have the funds wait uh, i no, don't have sufficient doesn't have enough fund no uh, my no my node uh, okay uh, it already has uh, okay it has the, like some amount of msats yeah so using these i'll fund the channel between l1 and l2 uh, right this is the node id of l2 so l1 cli fund channel uh, this is the node id of my peer and this is the amount that i'm uh, opening my channel for oh, uh, i'll have to connect them first sorry uh, right yes for that i'll have to uh, give the address in it port 7272 7272 hmm. so right. this so is the transaction that got created yeah now we'll uh, mine some blocks to get this transaction on chain uh, and the channel will get confirmed uh, this is the address this is the command uh, generate to address we are mining four blocks right yeah so okay. now if yeah now if i list the peers through l1 so this is my peer it's channel d awaiting lock in because uh, my lightning node hasn't synced up with these four blocks it will be in few seconds yeah so it's channel d normal channel ready for use so we have uh, opened a channel between these two nodes now the user can use the commands pay create invoice to make the payments and it's instant like it's in a second so but yeah uh, we are we are testing static channel backup so now i'll delete my database uh, by going into the lightning directory so i'll stop the nodes first mm -hmm. now i'll have to head over to the directory so i i'll have to share my full screen wait a sec is my entire screen visible it's coming i hope now, it is yes yeah see your file so uh, yeah for the rest test we store the lightning directories in the temporary folder this is the l1 rest test and this is the l2 rest test these are the uh, light, uh, lightning for directories for the respective nodes right. uh, and this is where the magic happens this is the static channel file this is the lightning database where all your states and all of those things are uh, stored so now i'll delete this uh, and you should never do this uh, right yeah now i'll uh, again are host you uh, in the terminal because it's very small oh, yeah all right so now i'll fire up the nodes again Yeah, so the nodes are fired up. I'll see Lightning L1 CLI because I have deleted the database. It must not have any peers. Yeah, it it doesn't have any peers. Uh, But we can check an L2 CLI and see the L1 is still connected with L2. L from L2's perspective, L1 yeah. is still dead. Yes. Yeah. From L2's perspective, we have a channel D normal. Channel D normal suggests that yeah, the channel is up and running and nothing mm -hmm. is at fault. So now I'll run this RPC command uh, L1 CLI uh, emergency recover. 
so it has internally taken the static channel backup decrypted it and sent an error message to l2 that we can't be together anymore uh, l2 won't know only by reading the error message that i have lost my uh, database or something so it will unilaterally close the channel let's see if uh, l2 has got that yeah so initially it was channel d normal uh, i sent an i sent an error we can't be together anymore and it okay, has uh, gone to... it really have the error message we can't be together anymore or if you can yeah. like <laughs> yeah it's hard coded into the uh, yeah nice. right now we are using this yeah. okay so yeah so the l2 cli has unilaterally closed the channel now we'll again mine some blocks so that l2 can drop off the transaction on the blockchain the closing mm -hmm. transaction If we head over to uh, L1 log, in some time it will. Yeah, so peer storage and these are the peer storage messages which are also. In, I'll show you where they are stored. List data store. So this is where we keep the peer storage. So if I enter in the node ID uh, as a parameter with this, it will show you the peer storage of L2, which is stored with L1 because we have connected. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So when L1 was storing his data with L2, L2 was doing the same with L1. Yeah. And both of them exchange their data uh, whenever they reconnect. Okay. Yeah. It must have now. Uh, yeah. So we have successfully, if I list peers on l1 so it has gone on chain uh, unknown commitment because the we have uh, l2 has dropped dropped off the final transaction on the chain and we don't have the states so our node has said it's unknown because we obviously don't know that and it has recovered uh, it has started to recover our funds uh, and the channel is closed it's on chain and you have your funds back uh, list funds so yeah this is the this is the closed transaction which has been recovered if i go to l2 list peers it has closed the transaction yeah so the channel is successfully closed and you have successfully recovered your funds using static channel backups and peer storage backups right right so yeah. Nice. So this basically so, works, and uh, this is already out there in the CLN latest version, right? Yeah, and all the fancy stuff that I have explained is handled internally by the node. You just have to run an RPC command, so no need to stress out on those details if okay. you are just a normal user. Mm -hmm. Makes sense. Yeah. Makes sense. But so far, like nodes are not asking for like SATs payment for this kind of storage. Like they are like yeah. doing it on a voluntary basis. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And that's in the uh, that's our plan like we'll be integrating that in it as well. right and yeah. eventually like it can turn itself into a marketplace yeah so yeah they have like rusty has this idea that each node should have a menu card attached with it in the init message so whenever i connect he can send me the the menu card uh, and I can uh, I can opt in what sort of services I need and pay some sets in exchange of it. So like right. creating a marketplace on the network. Basically, that's that's really cool. And in in a way, this is like the ideal way of like distributed storage. And we can extend this idea even further and say like it doesn't have to be SCB. Now you can maybe like encrypt generic blob of data for a payment. Yeah. So right. you can, yeah, you can use a storage of your peer for anything that you want. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Right now we are using it for static channel backups, but yeah, it can be extended further. So there are many ideas to take it, take this idea further and build, and we need developers for that new contributors. Right. right. Yeah. And that's uh, the beauty so of open source actually. Yeah. And uh, that allows people to like basically build on top of each other. Right. So true. Um, well, not everybody has to recreate the will in open source anymore. True. So, 
Thanks for the nice demo and the presentation and enlightening us about your storage backup. And uh, we, uh, so let's go on to some generic questions about path ahead, uh, path forward for like the topic of open source and Bitcoin open source and what can be done. So uh, one other question that many people generally ask me and it's a general standard question is like if a student or a software developer, whether with experience or without experience, wants to get into Bitcoin development, what's the best, what's the best thing that he can do? Yeah, so I think it's a two step process. Uh, the first step is to gain knowledge. You need some prerequisite knowledge, technical knowledge, what Bitcoin is, what the Lightning Network is, because uh, there are many things involved in the, its cryptography, its computer network, its all of those things. So first you should try to gain some knowledge that can be done through books. Like I would like to suggest uh, Grokking Bitcoin uh, and a book called Mastering Bitcoin by Antonov. It's a good book. It's open source. Uh, right. I myself used them initially in my journey and yeah, they were really helpful. The, so the first step is gaining knowledge and then you should get your like get down the rabbit hole, see what are the projects and decide at what level you want to work at. If you want to work at the base layer, you want to, uh, whatever you want to do, you want to, you, you should search projects. Uh, a good website for it is Summer of Bitcoin. You can get onto the Summer of Bitcoin, click on organizations and see different projects and see which of them suits your technical ability and your interest right. In and fact, start like contributing. The... Yeah, yeah, and in, in the Bitcoin development space is also like multivariate in that spectrum. Is like the kind of skills you will need to work at the UI UX level of Bitcoin is very different from the kind of skills you will need to work. Say, suppose what you are working on on the layer, uh, layer two protocol or even layer one protocol or more towards the base layer of the machine. So yeah. it's very important for you to figure out like where exactly does your interest lies and what kind of work is um, suitable for you. But the yeah. Bitcoin development work is kind of like extended from the very low level to the very high level and True. innovation and more to do's are there at every level of those abstractions right True. so and that is why one should not get overwhelmed by the huge amount of information you should just uh, have basic knowledge of the things and get on to the project there is something for everyone in this space even right. like we have designers in summer of bitcoin as well so they are Truly. purely yeah. non technical Yes, yeah. and, and there are like other requirements, for example, project management and uh, different other kind of things yeah. that are not related to Bitcoin development. Yeah. But uh, yeah. like um, uh, in the sense of like starting for a development journey, um, what are the like uh, uh, books and the standard reference material you have already mentioned about grokking Bitcoin, mastering Bitcoin, anything else you want to mention to our viewers that he, they might be interested into? Uh, after these things, one should get on to the white paper, I think, because uh, you should not uh, you should not initially pick up the white paper because you will not get anything. Uh, you yeah. won't understand a thing. So you yeah. should read these books and then you should uh, then read the white paper and then you will be able to appreciate the beauty of what Satoshi has created and what yeah. it is. Yeah. And then you can get on like there are many channels with uh, there are many video resources that like spiral has an education initiative as well like corner explains things about bitcoin so the yeah bitcoin you should get down networks. yeah you should get down the rabbit hole you should see what are what is the philosophy of bitcoin what it stands for what are the problems it is solving yeah it's and and most of this thing comes from like uh, basically uh, be, being in touch with it, like working on it, being in touch with the community, talking with people, True. listening True. to podcasts, watching like people having talk about other generic associated ideas. So it's basically yeah. a journey. So uh, you you should not, as a starter, you should not ponder too much about 
whether you have called all the uh, covered all the basics or not because like even experienced developer says this even after eight nine years in bitcoin you will not be able to cover everything there is always something that you do not know and uh, all you need to do is like get started with the journey because that's where the biggest amount of learning will happen to you and you will True. learn by trying to do stuff and uh, yeah. yep and uh, and never that, never like I, I would suggest newcomers to never hesitate to message anyone, any contributor, any yep. repository. Yeah. Yep. People and, are really yeah. helpful and we are willing to have you on board. So, yeah, exactly. Please. So it's it's a community of people and people are watching out for each other. So that has been my own personal read. Also, like when I started my journey into the development space, people are always willing to answer your question if you are asking a sincere question. And uh, so they are always willing to help you out in understand a project if you are willing to contribute into any open source project the maintainers are most of the time like more than happy to welcome you to show you around how the project looks like how the structure is so yeah just get your basics done and then start getting your hands dirty by and it's open source it's permissionless you don't need anybody's permission to work on any project so those were like nice suggestion. Thanks, Adit Aditya. So what does the path ahead looks like for you? Because you came from a metallurgical background. So this is not related to computer science directly. So how does it go from here now? Yeah, like definitely got not going back to metallurgy as a career. Uh, so right now I am I'm in uh, I'm making a project in cyberspace. Uh, in uh, cyber security so i'm doing this internship at silence laboratory where we make authentication systems uh, it's a deep tech thing using cryptography uh, mm -hmm. side by side i'm also working with rusty lisa and christian on cold lightning uh, nice. right now i'm in my final semester so after this uh, i'm looking out for opportunities in bitcoin i'm in talks with uh, many people i don't know if i can disclose the detail mm -hmm. i can get into the details but yeah definitely i would be getting in this space i won't be taking the fiat right job. so you are here for the long run right so yeah, you're not yeah. going anywhere yeah. anytime soon nice nice definitely. to have you on board in the team and yep and uh, this has been like nice work it's 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 really inspiring for young people to see like it's not only just the phds and the and the 10 year old google experience engineer he's capable of working on bitcoin students mm. of like even from non computer science background are also like capable of working into it and if you re if this subject really interests you and if you are really willing to put in the hours and go deep into it anybody can do this right so thanks for yeah. like uh, inspiring so many indian young kids that this is actually doable and a thanks a lot to Summer of Bitcoin to create this kind of platforms where people can come yeah. and gather up together and take up this learning challenge of learning Bitcoin from zero to one. That's the hardest part of the path, zero to one. After that, you just keep doing stuff. You learn through iterating, you learn through trial, trial and error, right? So um, any, any, any words of interest or like any curious point that you want to tell to your friends who are in tech might be listening to these videos and went into the traditional tech. Do you want to like say a few words about the cultural difference between the traditional tech and the open source Bitcoin FOSS ecosystem? Uh, what are the best ways to navigate for a, somebody who is... Um, who is more familiar with the traditional way of like uh, having a project manager assigning your task and then you are like doing your weekly schedule than the world of world of like Bitcoin Foss where you are like on your own it's permissionless to do whatever you want. How 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 do people navigate that? Yeah, so uh, initially in my second year I've been a web developer as well and I've worked with some firms as a uh, as a web developer in turn. And I used uh, like uh, because I didn't have anything to compare it with back then. I used to believe this is how the culture is. This is how things happen. Right. Daily scrum calls, deadlines, and all of those things. But uh, since I have gotten into Bitcoin, I like I can't go back to that culture again because uh, it's really good here. I can message anyone at any uh, any time, and they would be willing to help me. Uh, people are really good. There is no formal barrier between any like uh, like Rusty is way senior than me, but 
uh, I can message him right now and he would be on a call within seconds. So, uh, yeah, people are friendly. And generally, people believe that there is uh, 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 the pay won't be as good as uh, in this space as they have in their tech uh, job, but it's not true. Uh, in some, uh, if you research about the grants and the salaries, you would see that uh, it's more than that, uh, if not more. It's more than yeah. the salaries offered by some of the best companies. So yeah, yeah it's. Uh, this space has a lot to provide you just need to yeah. get uh, get on board it yeah and and, and bitcoin it, development is very a uh, high demand job in the market and hollers has been because it requires so much contextual knowledge not just about programming but about many other parts of like subject domains cryptography game theory economics and whatnot and all these things comes together and forms itself around the codes and all and as a developer you kind of have to have understanding of all these different parts also so True. bitcoin developers are like very highly priced uh technical positions out there in the market and as adoption grows day by day we it, it's gonna be very clear and apparent that no. um the pays are quite decent and uh, you can you can really make a lot of money and then at the same time you have a very well like uh, lifestyle balance uh, you are not doing a nine to five job people very well understand that everybody has their own working schedule everybody works in different times the, in the most efficient way and mm. and in a, gen a general way people are very accommodating but at the same time nobody is there to tell you what to do and that's yeah. the biggest hurdle people will face at the start of their journey because you don't know what to do and there is nobody to tell you what to do you kind of have to figure out your own path in your own way but over time it gets easier so don't get intimidated by it the is the important part is like just cover your basics and get your get your hands dirty right and start from there and eventually you will find your path and eventually you will network with people eventually you get in touch with the community you get in touch with nice projects and from there you will be able to figure your path out and 100%. so yeah um thanks By for the way, having oh, kudos yep. to like summer of bitcoin for catalyzing the process of onboarding university students into this space if it would not be summer of bitcoin i would not yes. be here uh yes. each every time like the year uh, the application process starts my dms get gets flooded by many students how do i get in what's the application process and yeah, yeah so yeah. it has really helped indian ecosystem summer of it. right right yeah. and and i i have personally witnessed this uh firsthand like uh after summer of bitcoin launched the indian dev ecosystem around bitcoin uh kind of like boomed up and this wasn't possible two years ago. We did the technical conference last November. This wasn't simply possible two years ago. There weren't simply that many people working on Bitcoin tech. The crypto and the blockchain industry has always has been doing its own thing. And it's always been there. But there hasn't been any consistent Bitcoin community in India. But summer of Bitcoin came and changed that over like the course of two years. So really excited what that program brings us next. Really excited yeah. what you guys work on next and uh, you and your batchmates and other interns. So uh, in Bitshala, we will be in touch with you guys. We will host you. We will feature you. We will do a lot of demonstrations. And the point is to spread this word that Indian uh, young technical engineers are also getting into Bitcoin and we are also working on good projects and we are here as a community for any newcomers to come here and we will be able to guide them and we will be able to like hold their hands along the journey. So that's yeah. our aim over here and thanks very much for like spending this hour with me and showing your work and sharing this nice advice and all. Any last words you want to tell to our viewers? Yeah, like get onboarded. There are many initiatives. Raj, Adi, all of these people are like trying their best to get the best talent out of India onto this space. Bitshala, Summer of Bitcoin. So one should really explore this uh, thing and it will, trust me, it would change your life. Nice. Yep. And uh, honestly, I have never seen anybody who is into Bitcoin and didn't say that line. And didn't say that. Yeah. And uh, yeah, and 
just another shameless shill before we end this episode uh, aditya already talked about one of the basic uh, books to cover is clock in bitcoin and mastering bitcoin and we also will be conducting and mastering bitcoin uh, online study cohort session from 3rd of feb uh, go to our bitshala website you will find the application link if you are somebody who is willing to get your hand dirty with the bitcoin basics you are too scared to start off alone we are gathering a group of learners together we will be answering questions we will be uh, conducting session and it will be a six weeks long of learning mastering bitcoin together hope that will be fun and you will find the details and all the procedure for in our website uh, do join that and come join in forces into uh, fixing the world by writing code so thank you adi a lot for coming here and doing this with us hope we'll keep con being connected and hope we can do this over many times in the future sure pleasure to be here it's an honor to uh, uh, do a podcast with you guys nice thanks thank you